This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to go through now and look at direct tax and direct tax specifically to do with companies. And when we look at direct tax with companies, we can essentially split it into to two aspects. The first bit that we're going to look at in this session is looking at the, the tax that a company pays on its income. So the tax it pays on its profits. Uh, you may have heard that referred to as corporation tax if you're based in the UK. Internationally, that's referred to as, as income tax. Also, as well as your income tax, we also need to look at it from a capital tax perspective, whereby a company goes through there and generates a gain on the disposal of an asset. How is that gain on disposal subsequently taxed through capital tax rules? Uh, there are some other areas that you could go through and consider, but the, the syllabus focuses on your direct income tax and your direct capital tax for a company. Uh, so let's focus on the, the income tax aspect because a company generates profits and we look at a company's profits from an accounting perspective, don't we? Okay, we've worked out the company's profits based upon all our accounting rules. Uh, we use IFRS. It could be that a different company uses local rules. Our focus is on IFRS. And we've applied various different rules that, that match up to the, the definitions per the framework, don't we? OK, one of those examples, I suppose, that we see is depreciation, an example of the accruals concept, isn't it? But the issue that you have with depreciation and a couple of other accounting conventions is that it is very subjective. It's open to interpretation, isn't it? With regards to do I use straight line? Do I use reducing balance? Uh, what percentage do I apply reducing balance? How many years is the economic life of the asset? So it's all very, very subjective, isn't it? OK, tax authorities don't like things being subjective. They like things that are very objective, very factual, very rules based. So what we're going to have to go through and do is to work out the tax that a company pays. We're going to have to calculate your taxable profit. And that taxable profit is calculated from your accounting profit. And what that does is that goes through there and takes the tax authorities specific rules uh, upon how they treat items. And therefore, based upon those rules, we may need to adjust the accounting profits to calculate the taxable profits. Once you have the taxable profits, it's nice and straightforward because you can then just apply the tax rates from that competent jurisdiction to be able to go through there and work out the tax liability. OK, so what have we got there? Uh, so we're looking at your income tax. So the key bit, first of all, is that anything to do with non trading activities are ignored. OK, so anything that's non trading. So your your gain on disposal of any assets. Uh, it could also be there as well if you like dividends. Uh, they are ignored. OK. Uh, and what you've got there is underneath your, your tax computation, which I will go through there and learn. OK. So what you do there is you take your accounting profit. So to you and I, accounting profit is your profits before tax. OK. And what you do there is you deduct any non-trading income. Remember, we said anything to do with non-trading activities are ignored. So things that we have there, again, I think it's just something that you're going to have to go through there and learn. Uh, that's the way that tax is, isn't it? It's rules rules have to be learnt. Uh, but things that you've got there, such as rental income, that's not part of your trading activities. Your trading is to buy goods and sell goods. You might have an investment property on the side that, that gets you some rental income. That's non-trading, so we remove it. Likewise, any interest receivable. I think we mentioned as well before dividends, didn't we? And also any capital profit to so the gain on disposal of an asset. OK, so anything that's not to do with your day to day buying and selling of goods, something extra that you earn or something extra that you incur, we, we need to adjust for. So any income we will deduct. OK, uh, we then add back any disallowable expenditure. OK, uh, so what do we mean by disallowable expenditure? Well, things that are allowed for accounting purposes, so it is an expense, but the tax authority don't deem that it is necessary for your business 
uh, or they disagree with the accounting treatment to go through there and give you the deduction. So therefore, your disallowable expenditure, the key bit there is that you will add that back. OK, add that back to your tax. Oh, sorry, you've got accounting profit, don't we? Uh, you've got that entertaining. So you know, client entertaining. It's nice to take your clients out on a bit of a jolly, isn't it? Have a nice afternoon out. Uh, but it's not allowable for tax. OK, otherwise everybody will be taking their clients out to reduce their taxable profit, wouldn't they? OK, uh, depreciation and amortization. The reason why we add those back there is because that is too subjective, isn't it? So what we will do is we will then replace that with a little bit more of an objective view of depreciation and work out a tax depreciation amount that will subsequently be deducted. OK, uh, taxes paid to, to other public bodies, uh, you know, just because you paid your tax, uh, that's not going to then be allowed as a deduction. So, again, uh, that is added back. Likewise, donations to political parties. OK, uh, nothing wrong with donations to political parties. That's fine. Uh, but to prevent excess donations so that people pay no tax, uh, that is disallowed. OK, the, the key one that you've got there, however, tend to be depreciation and amortization. On the odd time, it might be client entertaining. Just note staff entertaining is allowable, but I think that's just getting a little bit too picky. OK, uh, so what you've got there is we've looked at the non-trading income. We've looked at the, the disallowable expenditure. So that gives you an adjusted trading profit before you go through there and then deduct your capital allowances. Capital allowances is, is your UK speak for looking at your tax depreciation. And again, that's based upon specific tax rules. For now, we will just be given the tax depreciation within the question. In the next video, we will go through there and see how to calculate the tax depreciation following the tax authority rules. OK, uh, before we go through and do an example. Uh, just note bits and pieces that are allowable. Uh, if they are allowable, then what you've got there is that there's no adjustment. You don't need to add it back. Uh, it's already been deducted, so there's no adjustment to your accounting profit. Okay, uh, so I don't think there's anything there that, that particularly jumps out okay again i wouldn't worry about it too much in terms of learning though it's just a little bit of time uh, interest paid uh, that's fine as long as it's for, for, for trading purposes and not if you like for investment purposes uh, staff wages i think that makes sense doesn't it you need to be allowed to deduct that legal expenses advertising audit trade subscriptions repair uh, just notes again uh, tax paid to lower levels of government i wouldn't pay any attention to that whatsoever uh, what do you mean by lower levels of governments? It just gets a little bit too complex and then becomes too specific for, for the country that you are then looking at with your competent jurisdiction. Uh, so let's go through and have a look at two examples uh, for your income tax computation. Again, uh, both of these scenarios involve, is it country X? Uh, and when you're looking at country X, remember, uh, country X pays tax at a rate of, is it 25%? OK, uh, so in the exam, if it wasn't country X, it would tell you the rate of tax. OK, uh, so if we have a look at the first one, it says uh, the bit in bold wants us to work out, is it the tax payable? So to work out the tax payable, we need to work out the taxable profit. So adjust the accounting profit. And then once we've got the taxable profit, we can apply that 25%, can't we? OK, uh, so it says company M is resident in country X and makes an accounting profit of 350,000. So that's our starting point. Uh, it includes depreciation of 45,000. So that is disallowable, isn't it? Likewise, there is a disallowable expense of 20. So both of those disallowable expenses, we need to go through there, don't we? 
and add back. Okay. Uh, the tax allowable depreciation is there is it as thirty thousand. Again, that tax allowable depreciation is what we are going to go through there, isn't it? And deduct. Okay. Uh, that's what we need to deduct to get our taxable profit. So what we've got there, if we go through there and look at income tax computation number one. Uh, my accounting profit was there, was it as $350,000. Uh, we add back the depreciation, which was 45000 we add back the disallowable expenditure, which is there as 20,000, isn't it? And then what we will do is we will replace the accounting depreciation with your tax depreciation, which gives me 30,000, okay? Tapping that into your calculator, I think it gives you 385,000. And you're then applying, is it 25%, which gives me 96250. Again, it doesn't specifically say that it's 25% in the question, but in the old syllabus, uh, country X had a tax rate at 25%. Okay, there we go. Everybody happy? It's not too bad, is it, really? Okay, if you remember the pro forma, as I said, it doesn't go through there and overly test you or overly complicate things when it comes to looking at the computations. It wants to ensure that you have a basic understanding of the principles of how it works. Uh, if you want, you can go through there, stop the video and have a go at example number two by yourself. Okay, uh, and then restart it again as, as we work it through, because again, uh, I, I think it's very, very, very similar. Okay, maybe one extra little bit that you've got there. Okay, but we'll go through uh, and work it through together. Again, same requirements. Uh, it's got the is it your tax payable? Uh, the accounting profits that we've made. So our starting point is three sixty. Again, we've got depreciation of forty. Uh, you've got ten thousand of expenses are disallowable. So both of those will be added back. You've got the tax allowable depreciation of 30, which again, we will go through there, is it, and deduct, okay? Uh, the other one that you've got now, the, the new bit, if you like, uh, that accounting profit includes non-taxable income, okay? So remember that non-taxable income there, you will need to go through there, won't we? And deduct your non-taxable income, okay? Likewise, uh, your tax allowable depreciation, you will deduct uh, whereby the depreciation, the disallowable expenses you add back. Okay, makes sense? Hope so. Uh, so what you've got there, if you look at, is it number two? Uh, we start off there, is it again with our accounting profit? Our accounting profit in this instance was 360000 uh, we are now going to deduct, is it your non-taxable income, which was 35,000. Uh, we then add back the depreciation, don't we? Uh, the depreciation was 40,000. You add back. The disallowable expenditure, which was 10,000, you deduct the tax depreciation, and again, the tax depreciation is there as 30,000. And when you total that up, does it give you, I think, 345,000? Okay. Again, the only bit that was new in this example compared to the previous one was the non-taxable income. Okay, that is what we deduct. 
again, what we can go through there and do is we can take the 345. We're looking there, aren't we, at country X, which has a 25% tax rate. So there, I think your tax works out at 86250. Don't worry, the examiner is then not going to test you on that number, trying to get you to account for it. Um, work out what the expense is in profit or loss and the, the liability in the SFP. Essentially, that is the liability in the SFP. That number there, just above my right shoulder, 86250, that is the liability, isn't it? Which will be adjusted for under or over provisions. But we're not worried about that here. We are just worried and concerned about the calculation of the taxable profit to then be able to go through there and work out the tax liability or here. As it's referred to, is it the tax payable? Uh, have a go at some of those questions in the revision kits. They're pretty straightforward and you'll find yourself doing quite well within the exam. Next, we're going to move on uh, and look at your capital allowances or tax depreciation in a bit more detail.